All right, we ended our last lecture talking about this canvasback population that we had been studying for 20 years, and we'd been collecting data on the hatchlings produced per female for 20 years in this large canvasback population. Um, we asked if or which type of uncertainty this represents in the population, this variation in hatchlings produced per female in this canvasback population. And the best way to think about that is that the population had production of hatchlings at a population level is changing year to year, which is what we mean by environmental stochasticity. That is, the population vital rates are changing year to year. Because we said this is a large population, we can expect that the differences we observed here in these numbers year to year, hatchling production 3.05 one year down to 1.45 the next year down to 0.99 the next year, that these values represent real changes in the production of hatchlings in this population um, from year to year, probably due to variation in resource availability. Uh, or the like, so or habitat availability. So um, this is environmental stochasticity, most likely. So we have these numbers. We, we have collected year to year 20 different uh, numbers representing the, the hatchling production in this population. And we can represent this as a histogram, which we did last time. And where we ended was we were in R. We read these numbers into R. We can produce this histogram. And what I did was made the x-axis a little bit longer so we can try to fit a distribution to these numbers. So we're going to try to fit a random number generator that can produce these uh, numbers or recreate uh, something that looks something like these numbers so that we could potentially use that random number generator in a population model to represent the hatchling production in this population. And so we started by using a log normal distribution which looks something like this, although that's, this is a pretty crappy fit to this uh, data. So I asked you to try to um, use trial and error to get um, to estimate what the mean log parameter really should be for this to fit this data properly. So what we can do is just copy this a few times and just change the mean log each time. And it's going to add a curve to this figure so we can just play around with it and try to find a value that works. So if I tried 1.8, I see, oh, well, that doesn't, that works even worse. So let's go uh, less than 1.5. Let's go to, let's go to 1. It looks a lot better. It looks better, but not great. So let's go to just 0.5 for the mean log parameter. It's good, but I think that's a little too small. It's actually the mean is a bit too small there. So let's try 0 0.75. And that looks pretty darn good. So if I recreate the histogram and just look at that mean of 0 0.75, I'd say that looks pretty good. To my eye, that looks pretty good. Now, I could actually get the correct answer using statistics, so I'm going to use this bit dist package, um, or fit dist function, I should say, within the fit dist dister plus package. <laughs> um, that's just saying I want to take this function from this package, and I'm just going to feed it in the data, and I want to fit a log normal distribution, and it'll tell me the best fit for the parameter. So it knows now that the mean log, the best fit is actually 0 0.68. And the standard deviation, or SD log, is 0 0.38. So I, I will say I kind of cheated and gave you the correct SD log parameter. So, uh, so you could just focus in on fitting the mean log parameter. But now we have the best fit parameters, mean log, equals 0 0.68 and SD log equals 0 0.38 or 0 0.39 0 0.39 and so now we can generate random numbers that 
represent future potential hatchling production in this population. So it's that kind of cool that we can just do that now. We can say R L norm for random numbers out of a log normal. Say I want to generate just numbers that represent hatchling production in the next five years. It's just going to make predictions and we're going to embrace uncertainty here and just say, yeah, we don't know exactly what it's going to be next year, but it's going to be something like this. So it'll take five years of, of future data, future predictions. Mean log is going to be 0 0.68 and SD log is going to be 0 0.39. And now I can get a bunch of random numbers that represent potential future hatchling production in this population. I can do it again and again and get different numbers and you can do it. I encourage you to do it on your own and you will get different numbers too. All right, so that is that exercise. Um, so I, again, I encourage you to play around with that. You can pause the video, play around with that. But what I'd like to do now is to move on to Insight Maker and what we're going to do now is play around with stochasticity and uncertainty. We're going to uh, go through all three types of uncertainty and stochasticity that we've talked about, which is number one, basic lack of knowledge. We call that parameter uncertainty, where we just don't know what the parameter value really is. It could be anything within a range, and so we'll deal with that. Then we'll deal with the two types of stochasticity, demographic stochasticity, and environmental stochasticity, and we'll do that in Insight Maker. So we're going to start off with a population that looks something like this. This is just a basic exponential growth model with explicit birth rate and explicit death rate. And we're going to set the birth rate to 0.4 and the death rate to 0.3, and we'll set initial abundance to 10. And, and the first thing we're going to do is deal with parameter uncertainty. We're going to imagine we have un imperfect knowledge about the birth rate in this population. Now the birth rate could be anything from 0.2 to 0.5. So we're going to say, well, we have we, lack of knowledge. Um, it could be anything from 0.2 to 0.5. Let's run the model with the lowest and the highest possible birth rate, and we can visualize those side by side within Insight Maker. So I'll show you what I mean there. So here is a basic exponential growth model. So take a minute to, to go into Insight Maker and pull up something similar to this. It should have explicit birth and death rate. I want you to set the birth rate to 0.4 and the death rate to 0.3. So we should have an exponentially growing population because the birth rate exceeds the death rate. The, the, uh, I'm just saying that we're uh, modeling muskrats in this case, and this is our beautiful muskrat. Um, and so, uh, so we can think of a kind of real population as we deal with this uh, very fake population <laughs> in Insight Maker. So here's our uh, here's our basic model. Start off with ten individuals, and if we simulate this, we get exponential growth. Now, in the um, in in the exercise that we're doing now, we're going to think we're going to imagine we we don't really know what this birth rate is. It could be anywhere from 0.2 to 0.5, right? So let's first make a scenario where, oops where that is set to 0.2. That's a low birth rate scenario. So let's simulate that. And we see we, uh, we have a declining population because now the birth rate is less than the death rate. So now um, we have this, uh, this exponential decline. We can actually name this, this uh, plot. And so we'll, instead of calling it the default simulation results, whatever, I'll call it low birth rate. And we can do the same thing. I'll just keep it on the screen. And I will run now a different scenario with the high birth rate. So here's a uh, 0.5 birth rate. So that will be should be a growing population. Let's simulate it and we see that, yes, it is a growing population. We can name this uh, simulation. We'll name it uh, high birth rate, obviously. High birth rate. And here we go. So now we have a low and a high birth rate. Now, Insight Maker allows us to compare these results side by side using the compare results tool. So we can go into tools and compare results. And what we're going to do is we're going to compare the low birth rate and the high birth rate results 
and, we're, and make sure in this primitives to contrast that you have the muskrats or whatever the population is that you are thinking about at this, at this time um, as the primitives to contrast. That is just like what you want to compare. And so then you can hit compare. And if I make this a little bigger, you can see what we now have is this envelope of uncertainty that we're, you know, the, the true population size at any time in the next 20 years could be anything between that lower green line, that green trajectory, and the blue trajectory representing potential future population size. Now, we have a lot of uncertainty here. There's, there's a lot of uncertainty in this population. That envelope is really large. We could, could be anywhere in 20 years from a population of approximately zero to, approxi to a population of approximately 400. And so that tells us something. And, and if this truly represented our uncertainty of the system, we would have to acknowledge that there's too much parameter uncertainty to really make an accurate prediction, prediction about the future. We would have to tell managers we're working with um, that what we really need here is to collect more data on the birth rate. We need more data. We do not have enough data to accurately project whether this population is growing or declining or what abundance it's going to be, um, we need more data. So that is our little demonstration on parameter uncertainty. So take a minute to play around with that. Uh, make sure you understand how to use the compare results tool because it's a very useful tool for, uh, for visualizing parameter uncertainty. All right. Once you've done that, you can pause the video and, and play around with that if you'd like. Let's return to our original parameter values, 0 0.4 for birth rate and 0 0.3 for death rate. And we should just see that we have a exponentially growing population just like before. Now, let's think about demographic stochasticity. Now, just going back to the lecture for a second. Um, we're going to use a couple different random number generators to represent demographic stochasticity. And de demographic stochasticity, as you recall, is just luckiness or unluckiness at an individual level that we cannot predict who's going to live, who's going to die. We cannot predict how many births uh, an individual female is going to have. Um, there's just going to be variation at an individual level that we just can't predict. And so we have to embrace that uncertainty. And to do that, we use a random number generator. We use random number generators for both the total birth rate and the total death rate in the population. And so uh, for the death rate, we're going to use a what's called a binomial distribution, which every time you hear the term binomial distribution, you should think of coin flips. That is, we flip a coin the same number of times as there are individuals in the population if the coin comes up heads, the individual dies. In this case, because the death rate is 30%, we're using a biased coin. It's not a 50%, 50-50. It is going to come up heads 30% of the time. That is, you're, um, if the death rate is 30%, um, it's going to live 70% of the time, die 30% of the time. Um, so, but we can still use a binomial distribution for this. And it essentially just represents the number of times the heads came up or the number of deaths in the population. So uh, we can use a random number generator in InsightMaker. And in InsightMaker, the syntax is rand binomial. And then you give it the total population size as basically the number of coin flips that you're doing. And you're counting up the number of heads uh, given that the death rate is 0.3 or 30 percent. So the number of heads meaning the number of deaths. Um, so uh, the number of deaths each year is a random quantity determined by coin flipping, essentially uh, the, the binomial random number generator. Um, and the total deaths is computed by flipping a coin for each individual in the population and killing off all individuals that come out heads. So okay, hopefully that makes at least some intuitive sense. And I'll show you how to do that in Insight Maker. For the total births, we're going to use a different random number generator. It's called the Poisson distribution. Now, the Poisson distribution is often used to represent births because it produces whole numbers and it cannot go negative, and it doesn't have any upper limit like the binomial distribution. Now, the binomial distribution can't go above the total number of coin flips. You can't have any more heads than you have 
number of coin flips. And so it has a hard upper limit. Now, there could feasibly be more births than there are individuals in the population. Imagine all individuals have two offspring that obviously now have more offspring than there are individuals in the population. And this wouldn't be possible with a binomial distribution. So we have to use something like the Poisson distribution. And to do that in Insight Maker, we use the syntax rand Poisson, and we give the rand Poisson function just the mean number of expected births, which is just the population times the birth rate. And just know that in Insight Maker, you can break these uh, expressions into multiple expressions if you'd like, just like R. Within Insight Maker, in that equation editor, you can say, define a variable called lambda, which is the mean of the Poisson distribution, and then we can call the Poisson random number generator from there. So in plain English, the number of births, that is the births flow in Insight Maker is a random draw from a Poisson random number generator with a mean equal to the expected number of births. All right. So let's go into Insight Maker and let's uh, model demographic stochasticity. So the birth rate and the death rate aren't going to change. So that those can remain 0.4 and 0.3. What's going to change here is we're going to go into the deaths equation editor. And instead of having a fixed number of deaths that is determined as the, the total population size times the death rate, like we've done before, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of that and open the random number functions, go into binomial distribution, all right? Binomial distribution, um, how many coin flips? Well, that's just the total number in the population at any given time. And what's the probability? Well, that is the death rate, all right? So that is how we can model demographic stochasticity in the total number of deaths in this population. So RAND binomial, total population size, and the death rate. So it's pretty simple and just apply there. All right, and let's do the same thing for births. So we go into the equation editor for the total births, and we can define this new term, lambda, which is the mean of the Poisson distribution. There we go. We could define it. We don't have to call it lambda. We could call it, whoops, we could call it mean births. Maybe that's a little, a little more intuitive, uh, mean births. And then we can call the random Poisson generator here. Sorry, that was my phone going off in the office. Um, and we feed in the rand Poisson the mean births. There we go. And we can apply that and we can simulate. And we should see that we have some randomness now within our total population size. And um, every time we run it, it should look a little different. There we go. Now, remember, oh, getting a call on my cell phone now. Um, all right, so what uh, we can, we have to remember that every single uh, simulation here, uh, we can't treat that as the known future. It's the, the unknown future has to include a whole bunch of simulations because everyone's going to look a little different. So we're going to want to put a lot of different simulations together if we want to get a good idea about what the future is going to look like in this population. So. Insight Maker provides a very useful tool for doing that. Instead of just having to simulate a whole bunch of different um, futures, what we can do now is go into Tools, Sensitivity Testing. Sensitivity testing allows us to run a simulation multiple, multiple times. You could run it 100 times. By default, it runs 50 times. And you can plot each run. Um, if you'd like to see every run, um, side by side in the same plot and make sure that under monitored primitives that you put the total that, that you put the population so you're going to monitor the population size and you're going to run it 50 times um, and let's just run the analysis and see what happens so 
by default, it, it produces this quantile plot. You can interpret this as that green region encompasses every single one of your 50 simulations. That brown region here encompasses 95% of all your simulations. The blue region here encompasses 80% of all your simulations. The yellow region here encompasses 50% of all your simulations. All right. Um, if you wanted to see all your simulations side by side, you can go to this runs chart. And that provides what I like to call a spaghetti plot uh, for obvious reasons. Um, not the prettiest plot, but it's kind of useful to see all your simulations side by side. All right. So what I'd like to do now is uh, take a break. And um, what I want you to do is to change the initial abundance. Now, the initial abundance is set to 10. Change that to higher values. Change it to 100. Change it to 500. And see how demographic stochasticity affects the future population with gif different starting values for abundance. All right? So take a few minutes to do that, and I will come back and we'll uh, finish this uh, discussion of stochasticity and insight maker in the next video.